4.3 is vertical and horizontal asymptotes. That's the title of the lesson, but it also includes oblique asymptotes as well. So what I'm going to do is go over all the different types of asymptotes, and then I'll do a 4.3 part two, where I will do a complete analysis of a, a rational function that has an oblique asymptotes. So you can see everything up to this point that you should be able to do. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Uh, subscriptions mean more people come to the channel and that way I can help more people. Okay, so if you go back to rational functions, in chapter 5 there's a playlist in the advanced functions section uh, for a quick review of all the different types of asymptotes that I will be covering here. I'll be covering them a little more briefly in this lesson because you should already understand how they work. But if you don't, I would suggest you look back at the Chapter 5 playlist to see if there's something that might help you out there. Okay, so the first thing, uh, restrictions on the domain. What makes the denominator 0 is your vertical asymptote, and from now on we'll call them VAs, unless it also makes the numerator 0. If you need to factor, if so, you need to factor and divide out what make, makes both zeros and you have a hole in the graph at that point rather than um, a vertical asymptote. And that's what we call a point discontinuity. So here's an example of a point discontinuity. I would look to the denominator and I would say what makes this zero? I'd say minus two because minus two plus two is zero. But if I put in minus two here and squared it, that would give me four minus four is also zero. So obviously this numerator is simply a difference of squares. Oh, so we have x plus 2 times x minus 2. And you can see that if I divide by x plus 2, don't forget that what you have in the denominator, it's really nice to put it into brackets to make sure that you're always dividing all of it out. Okay, it's like a package deal here. A whole little family's got to go together. So these would divide out and you would be left with graphing x minus 2. Now everyone knows what x minus 2 looks like. It's a line with a slope of y and a y-intercept of minus 2. So I would put my, my um, dot there and a slope of 1 would be up 1 over 1. Uh, so it would be right here like this and two points are sufficient to make a line. And so I would have this. But this would be incorrect if you left it there because you do have a restriction on the domain that x cannot be minus 2. When x is minus 2, minus 2 minus 2 would be minus 4. So you can see that at minus 2 and minus 4, we should have a hole in the graph, and you would write it like that. Okay, so that's a point discontinuity. Now let's go back to the infinite discontinuity. It's simply another expression for saying a vertical asymptote. This would be um, characterized by a rational function. Again, all these rational functions have the possibility of vertical asymptotes, right? Okay, so we have x over x minus 2. So if I said what makes a denominator 0, it would tell me 2. So when x is 2 here, you should label your axes always, it looks really nice. And I would put in a dotted line here and I would label it x equals 2. Now you should note that when you discuss or you state a vertical asymptote, you don't say 2. It's equation of a line. It's a line. x equals 2. Don't forget that. It's very important. Okay, so now I need to know, is the function going up on this side or down on this side and up or down on the other side? So what I want to do is take a limit. And now this is something because it's calculus, they like to use limits. So I would say, what's the limit as x approaches 2, because that's my asymptote, 2, and a plus sign means from the right, from the right. So you might want to make yourself a little number line here, especially when they're negative numbers, because sometimes you would plug in maybe a wrong number. But if I said 2 from the right here, I would mean uh, something like, well, you can even use 3, or you could use a really small number like 2.001, and from the left would be something like 1.99, right? So your choice, you can, 3 would be adequate to tell you whether it's going to be um, above 
the x-axis or below. You really need to know is it going to be negative or positive because I do know that it is an infinite discontinuity so I either have to be shooting up or down. So if I put in 3 here I would have 3 over 1 which is 3. So at x equals 3 I'm at 3. So from the right that means this function has to be going up like this. Now another thing that I taught way back in chapter 5 of advanced functions is that this is what you would call an odd asymptote. The reason it is odd is because the factored form of the denominator, and in this case it's already factored for me, it has an exponent of 1, doesn't it? So that's an odd number. That makes this an odd asymptote. Right here, it's an odd asymptote. And if it's odd, then the vertical asymptote is odd, meaning that the behavior of the function goes in opposite directions on either side of the asymptote. So that means if it's going up on this side, it has to be going down on this side. Now you could, you could probably see that to be true, because if I squared this, I would have the same number, right? If I had x minus 2 squared and went to the left or the right, it's both they're both going to end up being positive numbers because I'm squaring them. So if I went to the left, let's say I put in 1. So I would 1 minus 2, that's negative, and 1 divided by a negative is a negative. So it means I'm down here. Now, the other thing that you should know, and we haven't discussed the horizontal asymptotes yet, though, is what is the horizontal asymptote for this? If you think back to the graph of 1 over x, 1 over x had, uh, let me just sketch it over here, 1 over x had a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 and a vertical asymptote of x equals 0. Remember that function? It looks like this. Key point 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1. So that's your graph of, of y equals 1 over x. So it had both a vertical and a horizontal asymptote. In this case, the horizontal asymptote is 1. I'm hoping you know why. And the reason is that these have the same degree. So the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the, the coefficients of those variables. And in this case, that would be 1 over 1. So I will talk more about that a little later on in the lesson as well. So that means we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1. So I'm going to call that an HA. And don't forget, it is the equation of a line. And the vertical asymptote we said was x is equal to 2. x equals 2, y equals 1. So if the function is going up on this side, it has to be going down on this side. You could probably tell me what the x-intercept is. The x-intercept, you set the numerator to 0. So it's going to go through this point here. So the function is going to go like this on that side, and it's going to come down on this side. And there you would go. That would be your example. Now, you could um, check also. Your teacher might ask you to find the limit from both sides. So you would say the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. And in this case, the limit, it goes to infinity. So the answer isn't infinity. You don't say the limit is infinity. You'd say the limit does not exist. Okay, D and E. The limit does not exist because you can't go to infinity. Okay, so that's how you would check an infinite discontinuity at a certain point on your function. And again, you really just need to know something to the right or to the left. You don't have to put in 2.0001 and 1.999. You don't need to. You just want to know, is it going to be positive or is it going to be going down? You could check 2.0001 if you want on your calculator and maybe your teacher might ask you for that and I'm not going to tell you which one you should do, but just how to check it. Okay, so let's go on to another example here and this would be another vertical asymptote which has an it's an even asymptote this time. So odd, remember, had a degree of 1. This one has a degree of 2. So the vertical asymptote is going to be what makes that denominator 0. x equals minus 2. And I'm going to write after it that it is even. 
it's an even asymptote, meaning that the function is going to go in the same direction on both sides of the asymptote. What is the horizontal asymptote for this? As you, when you check a horizontal asymptote, you want to know what happens as x gets very, very large. You could either go negative or positive infinity. Normally we just do positive infinity because if it's positive infinity, it's going to be the same for the negative infinity. So if I put in something really, really large into the denominator here, really, really big number, choose your own adventure here. Let's put in 100,000. So I have 100 and 100,002, and I'm going to square it. And you can imagine that this one over that number is going to be huge. So I'm dividing one by a really, 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 really big number. I'm going to get a really, really, really small number. So that means it's going to approach zero. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So I put in my dotted line on this one here and I say y equals zero. You're going to be asked to label those asymptotes. I'm certain of it. And the other one is x equals negative two. So I have my vertical asymptote and my horizontal asymptote, H A V A. You don't need to write that on, it's just, you should label them. Okay, so I want to know what happens as X approaches two from the right or two from the left. As X approaches, now this time I'm not writing it out as a limit. So I can say as X approaches two from the right, so let's say um, 3, 2, 2.01. So if I put in 2.01, oh, I shouldn't have 2. It should be, uh, uh, okay, well, I did, I did a different example. So it should be negative 2, right, as I approach negative 2 from the right. And again, you might want to put in a negative 2 from the right, because sometimes you'll put in the wrong number here right? Two from the right would be minus 1.999 and two from the left would be minus 2.001. So if I, let's, let's do this one on the calculator just for fun. Math is fun, remember? Oh, clear, clear. Okay, so I'm going to put in, um, what did I say? One point, minus 1.999. So minus one, oh, minus zero, Minus 1.999 plus 2.01, 0, 0, 1, of course, and I'm going to square it to the power of 2, and I'm going to do 1 divided by that answer, and look what I get. Ooh, ooh, 1 million. So as I approach minus 2 from the right, I'm going to a million, which is positive. So it's going this way. And because I know this is an even asymptote, and you could check, so I would say here, two from the right, y approaches positive infinity, or as x approaches minus two from the left. So it doesn't matter. Remember, I'm going to get the same number here if I put in minus one point, uh, or minus two point zero zero one plus two, I'm still going to get a negative 0 0.001. I'm going to square it and divide one by it, and I'm going to get the same answer, which was a million. So it's also approaching positive infinity. And again, this is what I'm saying here. If it's an even asymptote, as with the odd asymptote, once factored, if the exponent is even, in this case two, so the exponent of my factored term here was two, the graph goes in the same direction on both sides of the vertical asymptote. So I have it going like this and like this. Um, what is the y-intercept? Set x to 0. 0 plus 2 is 2 squared is 4. So I have 1 quarter. So it's going to be something like that. So it's going to come down like this. And it's going to approach there. And on this side, we don't have another... Um, we don't have another asymptote to cross, so it's just going to go like that. And there you go. That's an even infinite discontinuity or an, a vertical asymptote at x equals minus 2. 
Okay, let's turn to the obliques because they tend to cause a little more trouble because they involve a little bit more work. So in this case, I have an oblique asymptote. And how do I know it's oblique? When the degree of the numerator is one greater than the degree in the denominator. Okay, so this is squared, positive 2, positive 1. This is 2 and 1. So these are both going to have oblique asymptotes. So how do I find an oblique? Well, what you do is you find an equivalent form of the rational expression. So you can do that either by long division, which I'm going to do for this question here, or for this one, I can just divide each term by x. So this is basically equal to x minus 5 plus 4 over x. Okay, because there's only one term, this is, it's like me saying, What's, um, what's minus one quarter plus two quarters? I don't know. I didn't want to write like that. I want to say, what if I had minus one, minus one plus two plus three over four? You could say, oh, that's the same as minus a quarter plus two quarters plus three quarters, right? Same thing. So I divide each of these by X and I'm left with this. Now, what does this mean though? So remember oblique and horizontal asymptotes, you're still looking for what happens as x approaches infinity. So I would say as x approaches infinity, the only term that's being affected here, so this would be infinity minus 5 plus 4 over infinity. But what's 4 over infinity? So as x approaches infinity, you need to state this, that 4 over x is going to approach 0 and because it approaches zero, we can just ignore it and state that the oblique asymptote, so then I would say, therefore, OA, oblique asymptote, is y equals x minus 5. There's your asymptote right there. Okay, so what happens if I can't divide each term, because I've got, I've got a binomial in the denominator here, I can't just say, oh, 3x squared divided by x minus 2. Well, no, you need to use your um, long division. And remember, long division would be like, let's say I want to do something really basic, like how many times does 3 go into 14? You'd say, well, it goes in 4 times, and then we'd get 12, and I have the remainder 2. So 3 goes into 12 4 and 2 thirds times, right? That's what we're going to do but we're going to use variables now. So I've got this x minus 2, and I'm going to divide it into 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. Now, do you remember how to do these? What you want to do is look to the first term. How do I get rid of 3x squared? That's the only thing you need to look at, okay? The rest will fall into place like magic. You do also, not in this case, but you would have to check to make sure that you have descending order. For instance, if there was no 2x here, I would have to write in here, I'd have to write 0x's. Okay, you need a place setting for everything. Just like if I asked you to write the number 100 and you just wrote 1. Well, that's nice, but I need the tens and I need the units, right? So fill them all in properly. So I say I want to get rid of 3x squared. So I would have to multiply x by 3x to get rid of that. So I put 3x here. And I expand. Okay, now again, there is a whole lesson on long division also in the advanced functions course. So if, if you haven't done that for a while, you might want to go back and find that lesson as well. Now I'll try to find it and put a little note on the video that you should be seeing right about now. Okay, 2x, and I'm subtracting. So 2x minus minus is 8x. And I bring down the minus 5, and now I want to get rid of 8x. So x to get 8x, I need to, to put in an 8 plus 8. So 8 times x is 8x minus 16. Don't forget that you're subtracting. The biggest mistake people make is forgetting to add minus a minus. Don't let that happen to you. So um, minus 5 minus minus 16 is minus 5 plus 16. That is 11. So this means that x minus 2 goes into this, 3x plus 8 plus 11 over x minus 2, just like we did here, 2 thirds, right? 
2, remainder 2 over 3, 11 over x minus 2. And now you make your lovely little statement. You would say, as x approaches infinity, 11 over x minus 2 approaches 0. Therefore, and this is important that you write all this out. I don't know if your teacher emphasizes that, but I certainly made my, stu my students write that. So the oblique asymptote is just what you have here, 3x plus 8. And of course, you could graph that onto your, um, when you do a complete analysis, you would have to put in the, the line 3x plus 8, y-intercept of 8, slope of 3. So from 8 up 3 over 1. Okay, so that's oblique asymptotes. Now let's talk about the horizontal ones. And I've got a brief summary here of what you would have seen in that lesson that I did in advanced functions. Remember that the question for a horizontal asymptote is what happens way out on the ends? What happens if I approach positive infinity or negative infinity? So we have four situations here. The first is that the degree in the numerator is greater than one more. So more than one more because we know that one more is oblique greater than one more than the denominator. So I give you a little example here. So I have x cubed minus 2x plus 1 over x. Now you could probably see that you could divide all these out and you would have a parabola. And as x approaches infinity, this approaches infinity. It's that simple. So if the degree, in other words, you could look at it this way. You could say, oh, um, this is so much bigger if I cube infinity or a number close to infinity, then I'm just dividing it by an infinity, right? So this is so much bigger. So it's going to approach infinity and there's no horizontal asymptote. This is very simple. I'm going to put pink because I like, I like pink. No horizontal asymptote. You actually end up with just a quadratic function, which you would know would, inf would look like this, right? And as x approaches infinity, this would approach infinity, this approaches infinity. So there's no horizontal asymptote. If the degree in the numerator is one more, just one more, no more, just one, than the denominator. So in this case, like x squared minus 2x plus 1 over x. What is the oblique asymptote? Well, I'm not going to write out all the work, but you can see... If I divide x squared by x, I would have x, and minus 2x by x, I get minus 2, and this 1 over x is going to approach 0. So y equals x minus 2 is the oblique asymptote. Okay, so these are all, it's not a horizontal one, I know, but I want you to see all the different types. Okay. The third one, if the degree in the, in the numerator is equal to the degree in the denominator. So let's say I have x squared minus 2x plus 1 over 3x squared minus x. What is the equation of the horizontal asymptote? So it's going to be this number right here, 1 third. Remember, so it's going to be the ratio of the coefficients of the highest terms, not these guys, these guys. So squared, squared, so one third. Make sure it's in descending order so that you don't make the mistake of using a number that doesn't match with the same degree variable. Okay, so this is the ratio of, ratio of leading coefficients with highest degree, highest degree. Okay, so they were both squared. The degree in the denominator is greater than the degree in the numerator. This is your last example. So as x approaches infinity, again, all you have to think about is this is getting really, 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 really big compared to x plus 1. So if I put a 1,000 here, I'd have a 1,001, and I'd be dividing by um, whatever 1,000 squared is, a million, right? So this is going to be really, really big, and that means... So as x approaches infinity, y is going to approach 0. So I would have y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. So those are the four possibilities, right? Bigger than, one more, equal, greater. Done. Okay, hopefully you followed all that.
Now the last example I'm going to do, because I think this is getting a little long, before I will do a complete analysis in the next video because they take a lot of time. We can also use limits to find the horizontal asymptote by dividing the highest dividing by the highest power in the denominator. So what does that mean? So if I was using this equation here, I want to know what is the limit as n approaches infinity of this. Now you can tell me right away, and I know you do know this, what the limit will be. What is the horizontal asymptote? You would say it's minus 2 over 1. Notice these both have squares, so it's just the ratio of those terms. But you may be asked to explain this by using limits. So what this is saying is that I can divide by the highest, the, the term, the highest degree in the denominator. So that's an n squared, right? You don't use the coefficient, even if there was one here. There's just a 1 here. I'm going to divide every term, numerator and denominator, by n squared. So that gives me 1 over n squared plus n over n squared minus 2n squared over n squared, and that's just the numerator. So this one's kind of long, isn't it? 1 over n squared minus n over n squared plus n squared over n squared. And if you simplify this, you can see what I'm talking about here. Let's go. Keep going. So limit as n approaches infinity. Normally I would just have simplified that as I went along, but I wanted you to see every point. So n over n squared is 1 over n, and these would divide into each other, and I would have minus 2, and here I would have 1 over n squared minus 1 over n plus 1. Now remember, you can't divide these out. Oh my goodness, I don't know how many times I've seen students do that. You can only divide things out when they are multiplied. You know that. Okay, so all of this, as n approaches infinity, is going to approach zero, right? Because I'm dividing one by really big numbers. So these all approach zero. Approach zero, which is really nice because then you get rid of all this stuff here and you're left with minus two over one. So the limit as n approaches infinity is minus 2. And then you'd say, therefore, y equals minus 2 is the horizontal asymptote. Don't forget it is the equation of a line. Okay, so that's a quick summary of vertical, oblique, and horizontal asymptotes. And again, in the next lesson, I will do a complete analysis of one with a an oblique asymptote because they're kind of tricky. Okay, see you there.